Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. And I'm back again with the next lesson in our Learn Scratch tutorial series. And in this lesson, I want to start talking about the edit module. I get quite a few emails specifically about the edit module from editors that are making a switch from another application to Scratch. And they find some of the things confusing. They don't know where to find things. So I want to start this as the first of a multi-part series, looking at the edit module, the ins and outs of it, and things that I think are important that you need to know when you're getting started. All right, now as you can see, we are in Scratch, and as we always start out by doing, I'm gonna head down here and we're gonna import some clips to work with. I'm already bookmarked onto my footage page, into my Art Beats folder. I'm just gonna select these three clips. Doesn't really matter which clips I select. I'm going to navigate down, I'm going to say open. I'm now going to take them, I'm going to click anywhere towards the top of the construct module to add them to my timeline. Now let's just take a little bit of a recap here to discuss these numbers down here. 1498, 1498, 838, 30, and 1798, 1798. What those represent is the clip's duration versus the container's duration. Now what's also important to keep in mind, if we head on over to the edit module, is that, let's just center this up here, is that what these quote unquote clips represent in my timeline is not the actual clip, but the container that they sit in. So we're going to be able to adjust that container size. We're going to be able to adjust the position of the clip inside of that container. And in this lesson, we're gonna start out pretty basic by talking about the edit modes over here on the right hand side of the edit module. Now, before we do that, a couple other things that I do want to mention. First of all, when working in the edit module, you might want to get in and start working with shortcuts. To call up your shortcuts, you can simply hit H on the keyboard and you can see right now we are in the edit module. So it is showing me the shortcuts for the edit module. More specifically, we are talking about edit modes. So you'll see that we have the shortcuts located right here in the lower left hand corner. I'm just going to click anywhere to close our shortcuts window. And let's talk about something else for me that is not a preferred way that I work, but it's a default way that Scratch works and that's in frames. In Scratch, everything is done in frames as you can see. The record in is 1498, uh, the source is in is zero, the out is 829. For me, that doesn't really represent a lot because if a client says to me, you know, how long is that shot or how long is that container? I'll say, well, it's 829 frames. And they say, what does that mean? Well, you'll notice that if you navigate over here and you click on one of these values, I'm just gonna click on the out value of the source. Inside of our calculator, we have a little parameter here that says time code. And you'll see it says toggle time code mode on or off. And as soon as I toggle it on, you'll now see that that frame value is now represented by a time code value. However, this is on a parameter by parameter basis, which is not really what I want. I'd like to have Scratch switch that over to be anytime it's available, show me the time code. Now you'll remember in a previous lesson, we talked about our settings. We have access to our edit module settings right down here. You'll notice that as I click on it, it's our user preferences. And we can do things like show proxy, show name, but I'm gonna scroll right down here to where it says our timing view. Now you'll see as soon as I select timing view, it's defaulted to be frames. I want it to be all time code wherever possible. You'll now see that those values have switched over to be time code. And I wanna show you something else in here, which if I come right back up here is show proxy. What this will give us the ability to do is to show a frame at the start of each one of the containers in my timeline. Now for me, I don't like having that. Why do I not like having that? Because there's an alternate way that I can see each shot that's in my timeline. I'm just going to close the user preferences right up here. You'll notice we have a little film strip that says toggle film strip navigator on off, or more importantly, the shortcut Alt and F10, Option and F10 for all my Mac friends out there. I'm simply going to click on that. And you'll now see that we can easily navigate through with easy to see thumbnails right here below the canvas. Very cool. All right, so let's move on. Let's start talking about the edit mode tools. Now what I have done, I'm just gonna turn the film strip off because I really am only dealing with three clips here. So it's not like I need to worry about jumping back and forth to different shots. I'm gonna turn everything off. Now, depending on whether you've just installed Scratch, you're sitting down at a system that another user has used, some of these might be turned on. 
And if you don't quite understand how they work or what you're doing, it can get a little bit confusing. What I've done is I've turned everything off. All right, and what this will give us the ability to do is to work with a clip basically on its own. I can adjust the start of where this container is going to be. I can adjust the end of where this container is going to be, but it's not going to impact anything else in my timeline. Let me show you what I mean. I'm just going to grab the start. I'm just going to start dragging away. All right. Now you'll notice that as I'm doing this, something is happening. And this is important for me to point out just for what we're going to be talking about in just a little bit. You would think that when I start pulling away from the beginning of the, I'll say the beginning of the shot, we are again referring to containers inside the edit module. But as I start pulling away, you will notice that what we're actually doing is taking the start of the container and pulling it down. We are not cropping the shot off right here. We're actually adjusting the container's start point. Now, what we've also done here by doing this is created the space for another container. Now, how do I know this? Well, I know this because if I head back to the construct module, you'll now see that we have a space here that is 238 frames long that can contain another clip. Now, what I also want to draw your attention to is right down here. Now, what we have is 592 and 830, 592 representing the size of the current container versus the actual length of the clip. All right. Now, what I have the ability to do is I'm just going to come back to the edit module. And if I wanted to get in and adjust the start point of where this edit happens, I'm just going to come right back to here. What I can do is with the shot selected, I can navigate down and hold shift down. And you'll notice that as soon as I do that, a bar has now appeared below my shot. I'm just going to undo that. You'll see how things are lined up now. Start of the shot, the end carries over underneath the next container. So if I hold shift on both Mac and Windows, I can adjust or slip this clip wherever I want it to start. Now, we're going to come back to this in just a second because we're going to talk about another concept that you might want to consider doing based on the type of changes you want to make. Now, to remove this space, what we can do is I can just undo what I just did to get back there, but I'm going to leave things the way that they are for now. I'm just going to head back to the construct module. I'm going to remove the empty slots. You'll see right here that we have now shortened everything up. Now, there is another way to do this that I'm going to talk about in another lesson, but we'll leave that for then. So let's now talk about these edit modes over here. Now you'll see that we have one that says reveal previous shot, reveal next shot. So what do these do? I'm going to click on reveal previous shot. Now you'll notice that if I come back here and I start to drag, we can again now adjust the starting point of this container and directly impact the previous shot. Okay. Now you'll notice if I undo that, not happening down here. I can still only adjust the shot that we have here. Okay, the shot that we're currently working on. I can pound it against that container, but it's not going anywhere. On the flip side, if we come down and we turn on reveal next shot, you'll see now we can reveal the next shot. We can reveal the previous shot but we are still sliding the container around. Now, of course, that does beg the question. What happens to all this extra space down here where I actually don't have any more clip? The clip is only a certain length. And again, if we head back to the construct module, you'll now see the container is 1137, but the shot's only 830. So that obviously brings up a big problem. Well, by default, it's going to just freeze when we get there. Now, I'll talk about how we can change that in the next lesson, all right? But what I'm going to do for right now is I'm just going to put everything back the way we had it before, kind of like that, okay, because we do have another option, which is this has been completely non-destructive up till this point. So what I want to do now is to do a ripple. So I can now turn ripple on. We can grab this and we can, let me actually just zoom back here. Okay. And we can now ripple this whichever way we want to ripple it. Let me actually just show it to you here. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so what we're basically doing is pushing this shot all the way down the timeline, rippling everything else in the process. Okay, we're fairly familiar with how ripples work. So again, let me just undo that. Now, right now, what we're doing is just impacting the clips that are currently on this track. 
If we wanted to impact this track and have it rippled down to additional tracks that we happen to have above this track, we have the ability to come right over here and to ripple the changes on the main and the subtracks as well. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna turn ripple off. I'm just gonna bring this back to about there roughly. Okay, perfect. Now let's talk about this feature right here. All right, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hover over and you'll see that it's called Reveal Media. Now, what exactly does Reveal Media mean? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to turn it on and I'm just gonna close up this window here. We'll just center everything up, make sure we're centered. Okay, perfect. Now, I like to set things up like this when I show this feature to people so they really see the difference when you turn on Reveal Media. You'll notice if I come down, I grab the start point of this edit and I start dragging. It doesn't appear as though anything has changed. And you'll notice drag, drag, okay? Kind of looks like it did before, but let's just undo that. Let's just turn off our edit modes. And what I'm gonna do is turn off Reveal Media. Now, you'll remember I said that if I take this and I drag it down, it's adjusting the very first frame of the container. Well, if we turn Reveal Media on, take a look at what it's going to do now. It's going to adjust the start of where that container is, but it's going to leave the media sitting exactly where it is in the container. So this is big and this is one that's always important to remember. So again, you'll see, I can adjust this container, not going to adjust the actual clip that's sitting in it. When I turn that off, it's going to adjust the container and adjust the clip directly in the container like the two of them are locked together, okay? Now, if I turn the edit modes on, keep in mind, now this in here, we're doing our reveal previous shot. Let me just turn on our reveal media. Keep in mind, we're moving the container, we're dragging it back towards the front of the timeline, so everything is going to move with it. However, once I stop and I say, okay, you know what, the container's good here, let's just now adjust its edit point with reveal media on. If I drag back the other way, it's gonna leave that clip exactly where it is because I'm happy with the position of where the clip was happening or the deer was doing its thing. We can just now adjust when it's going to actually edit onto the screen. All right, so that feature is a big one. It's directly going to impact what the clip is doing when it's sitting inside of the container. Now, let's move on here. We now have the ability to get in and insert or overwrite. Now, in this case, we can come in and import a clip. Let's just import some footage here. I'm gonna to come to my art beats. I'll just pick a clip that we haven't used. Sure, mountaintop, why not? I'm just gonna say open. We can now take this clip drag it right down here, and based on what we have this selected as, in this case, I'm just going to be dropping it in right over top. But what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to turn on insert, so what's going to happen now is that when I come back and I say import, again, I can just pick a different clip here, it doesn't matter which one, I'll say open, we'll navigate right down here, I will drop that into my timeline, so now if I zoom back, you'll now see that we inserted that container and that shot in between the other two containers that were already sitting in my timeline. All right, now, next. This is a good one, and this is one that always throws people for a little bit of a loop here, and this is the Enable Disable Drag. Okay, now I can drag containers around this layer, okay? But you'll notice that if I grab the container, I can't actually drag it anywhere else and I'm just gonna give myself a little bit more screen real estate here. I can't drag it up here to another track. So what I'm gonna do is simply turn drag on. I'm now gonna click and hold for a second and I'm gonna pull that clip out of there and I can now place it up on video track number two if I want to. All right, I'm going to again just undo that. Last but certainly not least in here, we have the replace feature which we can then get in and say, well, you know what? I didn't really like this clip that I used. So let's import another one. I'll just grab this one. I'll say open. You'll now notice that when I hover over top, the color of the container in the timeline has now changed to orange. Now, if I click, it will replace that in my timeline, but keep in mind that that shot wasn't long enough. So of course it's going to go to a freeze frame unless I change that after the fact. All right, so this is the way that these edit modes work inside of your timeline. Now, there were a bunch of issues that came up. For example, when I pulled the start of one of these clips away like this, it gave me a gap or a new slot, and I wanted to delete that. And you saw that I jumped back to the construct module, I hit delete, I came back, blah, blah, blah. 
you really don't want to be doing any of that. And there's a whole bunch of little things as you go that you're going to want to be able to do very quickly. Well, in the next lesson, we're going to talk about the timeline features inside of the edit module. And I'm going to show you how you can do a whole bunch of those very quickly and very easily. All right, I want to thank you for watching this great lesson on learning Assimilate Scratch. Now, don't forget to check us out on our different social channels. And if you missed our last lesson, you can simply click on it right here on the screen in front of you. Don't forget as well to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com.